Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we'll be diving into another movie franchise recap, which will be the sci-fi action duology titled Code 8. This will include both Part 1 as well as Part 2. Enjoy the recap. In a world where certain people possess superhuman abilities, Lincoln City was on its way to becoming the city of the future. With technological advancements, however, these powered humans or powers began to be marginalized. Amidst the government making registrations mandatory for powers, the use of a highly addictive narcotic named Psyche was rampant due to its main ingredient, the spinal fluid of powered humans. With its popularity among the non-powered communities, the cartel responsible for its distribution, the trust, was flourishing. In a bid to put an end to such operations and other petty crimes of the powers, the police employed drones and automated robotic officers called the Guardians in addition to facial recognition software causing citywide unrest. Connor and his mother Mary are both powered residents of the city. While they have several unpaid bills, Connor's job interview is a ray of hope. After the interview, he heads over to a residential construction site for half a day's work as an unregistered laborer with several other powers. Using his electrokinetic abilities that make him an electrician, Connor is at work when the place is raided by the police. After identifying half the workers as unregistered powers, they are asked to get themselves a permit if they want to continue working. One of the guys is arrested for having a warrant against him. However, when he unleashes his pyrokinetic power, a couple of guardians descend from the police drone and take him down with accuracy. Elsewhere in the city, another raid is underway at the apartment of Marcus Sutcliffe, a powered local trust agent with mind-reading abilities. Detectives Park and Davis storm in with the guardians to discover a psych farm where several powers are giving up their spinal fluid. To prove the police department was ahead in the game, they release a video later of the confiscated material sent off to be incinerated. In the evening, Connor picks his cryokinetic mother up from her shift at the grocery store after she gets fired because of an uncontrollable episode. When he urges her to start chemo sessions for her ailment, Mary reminds him that they cannot afford her treatment. The next day, Connor waits with Travis and a few other unregistered powers for contract work when he gets recruited by Garrett for a robbery. At Jones Chemical later that evening, Connor disables the electric fence with his bare hands so the rest of the team can proceed further. However, once they get the goods they intended to nab, they get caught by the security guard on duty. Forcing the guard into a dumpster, the team flees even as the police pursue them through drones. Stopping under a bridge, they peel their van to change its appearance and successfully avoid being recognized. Garrett drives them to a garage where they are escorted down a secret path to meet Marcus. Recognizing the anger in Connor through his powers, Marcus appreciates him joining their group. Despite Garrett informing Marcus about the three drums of hydro they nicked to water down their stash of psych, Marcus refuses to pay for it and instead suggests another job. Learning that Connor isn't aware of the extent of his power, Marcus asks Garrett to work on him before starting the new job. Dropping Connor off later that night, Garrett gives him $300 as a bonus and asks to meet the next morning. Once he gets home, Connor lies about having picked up a construction job and Mary informs him of getting her job back at the grocery store. Meanwhile, Nia, one of Marcus's team members, informs him that she wishes to leave their group with the power of psych over her is such that she isn't able to stop. The next morning, Park and Davis are at Jones Chemical surveying the damage. Considering the amount of stolen hydro, they correctly conclude that Marcus is desperate for money. The destruction of the electric fence leads them to look into the city's records of electrics that fit the bill. Meanwhile, Connor and Travis await being picked up for work. Despite Travis's warning to stay away from people like Garrett, Connor chooses to join him when he arrives because of the well-paying job. Once Garrett learns that Connor needs money for his sick mother, he decides to test him. Asking him to short the alarm of a car so they can steal it, Garrett informs Connor about a bank robbery they have plans for in a few days through which he could earn $25,000. Once Connor easily shorts the alarm, Garrett uses his telekinesis skills to unlock the car and the two then rob it. Realizing that Mary raised Connor like a child without powers since she did not wish to lose him like she lost her electric husband, Garrett then officially initiates his training. With a rocky start, Connor is unable to keep even one bulb lit initially. With time, as he learns not to get duped on the job as well, he is gradually able to simultaneously manage multiple bulbs. Garrett teaches him to embrace his Class 5 electric power instead of keeping it locked up. Connor gets his revenge from not only the electric who paid him less than he was owed, but he also teaches Mary's boss a lesson. One evening, Connor tells an elated Mary that he got the job he interviewed for. Meanwhile, Park and Davis have tracked him down at his residence as being an unregistered power with several medical bills and decide to keep an eye out for his activities. After visiting the bank one day, Connor and Garrett discuss their findings with their fellow powered team members, Maddie and Freddie. In addition to two security guards, the bank has multiple cameras, and its vault requires a two-factor authentication. 
Planning to use Connor's ability to short the bank's power with a surge, Garrett mentions packing up and leaving the bank within five minutes to avoid being caught by the police department's drones that will reach on-site seven minutes after the alarm is raised. Meanwhile, shaken after his interaction with Connor, Mary's boss volunteers to do her work so as not to cause any further problems with her son. Storming the bank as masked robbers, the team's powers subdue everyone into cooperation. Once Connor shorts the power, one of the employees is forced to enter her combination to open the vault. Having received the alarm, a police drone four minutes away from the bank is dispatched to the location. At the bank, Garrett is in for a shock after the vault is opened. While it was supposed to have more than $500,000 in cash, it is revealed to hold a much lesser amount instead. Once the meager amount of cash is packed, the team makes its way outside through the bank's back door only to be caught by the drone. Just as the Guardians are about to be deployed, Garrett gets Connor to hit the drone with a remote surge. Reluctantly using his power, Connor hits the drone to take it down before the team heads over to meet Marcus. Furious about getting only $50,000 from the bank, Marcus and Garrett quarrel over who is to be blamed for the job being a bust. Just then, Connor notices an assassin in their midst and calls out the danger in time for Marcus's bodyguard, Rhino, to step in. Despite being repeatedly hit, Rhino's bulletproof skin ensures that he is unharmed before he eliminates the assassin to prohibit her from causing more trouble. While Marcus and Garrett discuss what their next step should be, Connor finds Nia. When she sees a wound on his arm, she demonstrates her healing powers, causing Connor to ask why she stays close to Marcus. Not only does she heal Marcus in return for Psyche, but she also tells Connor about paying off a debt before Rhino interrupts them and asks her to get back to Marcus. Connor returns home later to find Mary with his stash of cash from his jobs with Garrett. Having also realized his lie about getting a job, Mary is disappointed to see her son following in the footsteps of his father. Connor tries to justify his actions by saying that he cannot be expected to just let her perish without trying to save her. However, her condition worsens just then and she collapses. At the hospital, Connor learns about the rapidly progressing tumor causing her to lose control of her powers. He is also told that Mary will need immediate surgery if they hope to catch the tumor in time which he knows will lead to steeper medical bills than ever before. Adding to his woes he is then taken in for questioning by officers Park and Davis. Mentioning the robberies at the chemical plant and the bank, Park asks for information on Marcus. Despite being further instigated by Davis regarding his parents, Connor refuses to spill any information. While it leads Davis to wholeheartedly suggest planting Psyche at Connor's residence to arrest him, Park decides to let Connor go since they do not have enough concrete evidence against him. Picked up by Garrett on his way out, Connor demands to meet Marcus about a job. They join Marcus and Nia a while later where Marcus reads Connor's mind to ensure that he did not tell the cops anything, suggesting that they rob back the confiscated Psyche worth $10 million while it is transferred to be incinerated, Connor offers Marcus a deal. He says that Marcus can keep the Psyche if he lets Connor get Nia in return. When Marcus surprisingly accepts the deal, knowing about Connor's sick mother, Nia furiously leaves. Garrett then reminds Marcus that they would be partners in this deal with an equal split of the psych. He says that once they pay the trust off, neither of them would be answerable to anyone else, which gets Marcus to agree with his deal as well. Over the next few days, the group meticulously puts together a plan for the location of the robbery considering all the cameras in the area and the practicality of their operation. While Connor maintains his opinion of trying not to eliminate anyone, the plan gives him only one chance to take out the four guardians they will be facing. Speaking to Nia one day, Connor clarifies that she would be free to live her life once she heals his mother. However, using her abilities for themselves is exactly what Nia is angry about since nobody would bother about her otherwise. On the day of the heist, everyone awaits the police transport truck at their designated positions within a no-fly zone to prevent getting attacked by drones. Freddy blocks the truck with a barricade compelling them to reroute and head towards Connor. While Freddy joins Maddie as they follow the truck, Garrett blocks the truck's path with an apparent inability to correctly maneuver a massive garbage truck to give Connor enough time to prepare his attack. Once he unleashes his power to successfully knock out the four guardians escorting the truck, Freddy and Maddie ensure that they are completely eliminated. Forcing the police officers to give up the confiscated psych, Maddie hands it over to Rhino and while it is completely unnecessary to do so, Marcus's men sabotage the plan and shoot the policemen. Rhino takes Maddie out and shoots at Freddy before taking off with Marcus and the stash of Psyche. Their men aggressively shoot at Garrett, Connor and Freddy, but they manage to escape when they are interrupted by the arrival of a drone and two guardians who brutally take down the remaining men. On the run, Connor and Garrett notice that Freddy has been severely wounded and steal a car to aid their escape. Meanwhile Nia realizes Marcus's foul play when only he and Rhino return to their hideout. However, she is unable to do anything once Marcus hands her a vial of Psyche and reminds her that her father still owes him a lot of money. Elsewhere Freddy bleeds out to his end, and Connor discusses their messed up plan with Garrett later that evening. 
They argue over who is to be blamed with Garrett believing that they were betrayed by Marcus, countering that Marcus was forced to betray them because Garrett demanded an equal partnership, Connor angrily leaves, receiving orders to keep the operation gone bad under wraps, Park and Davis are also strictly instructed to catch the culprits. Meanwhile an emotional Connor apologizes to Mary in the hospital and assures her about having found a way to help with her deteriorating condition. However, she insists that he needs to let her go instead. Elsewhere, Officer Park picks Lena, his daughter, up from his estranged wife who complains about her uncontrollable powers. Lena expresses her fear of being given away because of her condition when Travis approaches Officer Park and hands over a message. Following the address to a diner later, he meets Connor who promises to turn himself in once he saves his mother. Offering the location of Marcus's hideout, Connor urges him to nab the psych as well as Marcus. Officer Park chooses to use the information to scope out the place and then move in with a team where Marcus is holding Nia at gunpoint to heal his side effects of psych. While he is healed, his condition seems to transfer to her just when the venue loses power with the arrival of the police outside. The Guardians soon lead the raid even as Marcus tries to flee with Rhino and Nia through the secret path out into the garage. However, they face Garrett there who shoots Marcus before knocking Rhino's weapon away and proceeds to repeatedly shoot at him. While Marcus struggles, Rhino charges at Garrett only to be held at bay by his telekinetic ability. Connor enters the fight and attempts to overpower Rhino with his powers. Meanwhile Marcus tries to hand Nia a gun just as Garrett joins forces with Connor to take Rhino down. However Rhino's super strength is seemingly too much for Connor to handle. Fortunately, Garrett sticks a tool in his eye allowing Connor to overwhelm a staggering Rhino to finally take him down. On the other hand, Nia warily grabs Marcus's gun before Garrett strangles him with his power and summons the gun away from Nia. Connor then appeals for Nia to save Mary, revealing that her healing power isn't that easy. She shows him her wound which is a replica of the one she healed for him, implying that she takes on the condition she heals. This would mean that if she agreed to heal Mary she would simply be taking on her fate with the possibility of meeting her end. Nonetheless, Garrett hands over the gun to Connor to do what he needs to and walks away with the stash of psych. Connor takes Nia over to Mary and demands for her to be saved. While Nia begins to heal Mary and gradually takes on her pain, Connor abruptly stops her before she causes herself more damage. Mary wakes up just then but unfortunately passes away soon after. Later intending to turn himself in, Connor gives Nia his car to help her leave the city and apologizes for the harm he caused her. Five weeks later, Lincoln City hosts a vote on an outright powers ban. Meanwhile Officer Park reluctantly accepts an award for his contribution towards maintaining the city's safety. Elsewhere, Garrett hands over double the money that Marcus owed to Mr. Wesley of the Trust and hints at doing more business in the future to meet the rising demand of psych. Meanwhile Connor apologizes to Mary's grave for his inability to visit her for a while. On the other hand, Nia is relieved to meet her father at the prison. After spending five years in prison, Connor is finally free as he is observed on his way out by one of Lincoln City's beloved guardians. Garrett finds him walking home and offers to help him, but Connor dismisses him by saying the only help he wants is not to see him again. Life in Lincoln City does not seem to have changed much during Connor's imprisonment with one major exception. Growing unrest among citizens about how ruthless the Guardians are has caused the police department to gradually switch to non-lethal robotic canines instead. Meanwhile powered siblings Tarak and Pavani are among the poverty-ridden citizens of the city staying at an apartment complex at Monument Hill called The Towers. When Pavani mentions needing to buy some textbooks for a special course, Tarak assures her that he will manage the money. The next day, the police department showcases their latest robotic K-9 at the Towers which is also where Garrett now runs his psych operation by paying powers for their spinal fluid. When Tarak demonstrates his camouflage skills and asks Garrett to be promoted from his runner duties in the group to earn some extra money, he is denied the opportunity. Pavani on the other hand partakes in the police department's exhibition where Sergeant Kingston demonstrates to the gathered residents that the robotic canines are designed only to detain and will never cause any harm once you simply surrender. However, Pavani seems to have her own doubts regarding this claim. Later that evening Garrett hands over a bag of cash to one of his runners for a pickup. While he gets on his way, a desperate Tarak follows from a distance and sees the bag being dropped in a locked dumpster. Once the coast is clear he breaks the lock open to grab the bag. However an approaching vehicle forces him to hide and he sees Officer Stillman and Sergeant Kingston as they realize that the bag is missing. After spotting Tarak's bag, Officer Sorelli finds Tarak trying to hide with his inefficient camouflage skills before he makes a run for it. A robotic K-9 is set in pursuit who easily tracks him down but retreats when Tarak takes shelter in a warehouse. While Pavani waits for him, Tarak goes further into the warehouse and is relieved at seeing the cash in the bag he nabbed. However, he remains unknown to the fact that the K-9 has gained access to the warehouse from its exit and is still tracking him. When he hears its footsteps though, he tries to make a hasty exit and ends up alerting the K-9 of his presence. Quickly hiding, Tarak's skills let him avoid being caught and he heads home. However, a K-9 targets him there causing Tarak to surrender. 
Observing the progress, Kingston gives Sorelli the go-ahead leading to the K-9 administering Tarak with an overdose of Psyche. While he struggles with the narcotic causing his skills to go awry, the K-9 observes him till he stops breathing. Pavani chances upon the scene just then causing the killer to approach her instead even as she puts her hands up in fear. The next morning Connor is carrying out his janitorial duties at the community center when Officer Davis finds him there. Mentioning that he knows about Connor having taken the fall for the events of the past, he gives him his contact information before leaving. Mina, the manager of the community center comes along just then and hands over some food to Connor. Meanwhile, Kingston examines a damaged K-9 and learns from Sorelli that not even an electric should have been able to cause the K-9 any harm. Pulling up the last captured shot, Sorelli mentions that several units are already looking for the girl who caused this mess. While putting away the garbage, Connor comes across a scared-looking Pavani and gets Mina to speak with her. She tells him that Pavani lost her brother the previous night and that the police K-9 is responsible for it. Connor has a ton of other questions regarding the situation, but with the arrival of the police, Mina urges him to leave with Pavani. However, the cameras outside the building recognize them, causing Kingston to approach Garrett with the information and to demand a meeting with Connor. Meanwhile, Connor and Pavani reach his apartment where they catch the news report about Tarak. Disturbed by the lies spewed by Kingston on the screen, Pavani asks Connor to switch it off, but her powers seem to interfere with the television for a while before it can be turned off. Just as Connor asks her about her power, she senses the arrival of the cops through the police radio. Officer Stillman is accompanied by his team including AK-9 as they make their way into Connor's apartment building. Once they break open his door and barge in, Connor and Pavani are seen exiting a neighbor's house to escape. However, they are blocked by two guardians at the building's entrance. Compelled to use his power, Connor takes down both the guardians even as he is placed under arrest by the overhead drone. Staring at it, Pavani somehow causes it to malfunction, which allows her to flee with Connor. Later that evening, a helpless Connor meets Garrett and asks for assistance to get Pavani out of Lincoln City. Intrigue causes Garrett to ask why Connor chooses to live such a life when he could just as easily join him in his psych operation. But knowing the kind of person Garrett is, Connor says that any life would be better than the farce Garrett has to offer. Speaking of Pavani, Garrett says that she has the rare power of being a transducer which allowed her to take down the police K-9 the earlier night. Hearing that Garrett does business with the police for easier distribution of psych in return for a cut shocks Connor. But what causes him to worry for Pavani is Garrett's suggestion of getting her to work with him. Garrett says that her memory of losing her brother will always be a target on her back, which is why the solution to avoid getting her caught would be to erase that memory. While she initially refuses when Connor speaks to her, fear about her uncertain future makes Pavani ask him to come along. The two then join Garrett as he drives them away from the diner. On the way, Garrett tells her that one way for the powered community to avoid being exploited is to stay united, and then asks her to be part of that family. Arriving at their destination later, Pavani is led to a powered individual named Tamara. After holding Tamara's hands, Pavani is told to think about Tarak. She thinks back to a birthday celebration which Tamara locks onto and erases. When Pavani thinks of the previous night and how she lost him, Tamara is able to access the memory and erase it as well. When Connor realizes that things aren't going to stop here, and that it is intended to erase every memory Pavani has of Tarak, he tries to save her but is blocked by Garrett's men. Pavani continues thinking of Tarak, resulting in gradually forgetting his existence even as Connor desperately calls out to her while being held back himself. Eventually, Pavani's powers interfere with Tamara's skill causing her to be blocked out of her mind at the same time Connor unleashes his power and knocks everyone out before escaping with Pavani. When they arrive at Mina's place, she decides to join them as they flee the city. However, Sorelli spots her car headed out of the city and raises the alarm about the possibility of Pavani being with her. Instructing him to take one of their drones off-grid, Kingston tells Sorelli to contact Garrett with Mina's location. A couple of guardians are deployed soon after even as Mina's car gets ambushed by Garrett and his men. Kingston's team watches the scene unfold through the guardians as Garrett gets Mina, Pavani and Connor dragged out of the car. Unwilling to let Garrett have his way just to save a deal with a bunch of corrupt cops, Connor blocks Pavani from harm. Just as it seems that Garrett understands the truth of Connor's words, the Guardians open fire taking out Garrett's men as well as hitting Mina and Garrett. Brutal as ever, Kingston is determined to eliminate everyone involved to ensure that no trouble is caused later. Helpless and unable to escape on his own, Garrett offers to team up with Connor. Despite Connor not agreeing to the plan, Mina decides to sacrifice herself so they can escape with Garrett. While the Guardians are engaged with taking her down, the group reaches Garrett's car and manages to successfully get away. When Kingston arrives at the place where it all went down he finds Mina still breathing. His corrupt ways compel him to offer to get an ambulance for her, in return for information on where the others are headed. While he expects her to give him an answer, Mina simply spits in his face before breathing her last. 
Elsewhere, an injured Garrett directs Connor to drive them to an old orphanage where he asks for help with his wound. Connor and Pavani support Garrett as he pulls out the lodged bullet and she keeps him company later. When she asks if he grew up there, Garrett reveals his initials scratched into the wall with a bunch of others and says that they were his brothers. Connor discusses their next step with her a while later and suggests leaving the city, but Pavani refuses to keep running out of Kingston's fear. The next morning sees Officer Davis at their doorstep who tries to join forces with them by brainstorming methods to take Kingston down. While it is clear that the only way to stop Kingston's corrupt ways is by revealing his truth, getting evidence for the same is what poses a problem. However, Davis mentions that Kingston keeps the K-9 assigned to him at home and adds that if they could steal it, they'd have the recordings of all his dirty work. A plan takes shape when Pavani mentions that she can transfer the recordings to a device that Garrett says he can arrange for at the towers. Using an old car from the orphanage that Connor starts with his powers, they get to Kingston's residence posing as members of the police department. They meet Stephanie, Kingston's wife, who invites them inside to wait for him. From the car outside, Pavani sees Kingston reach home with his K-9 which he locks in place with his biometric in the garage before heading inside. When he sees the guests waiting for him, he isn't able to react with Stephanie there as well. Meanwhile Pavani opens the garage door and powers up the K-9 with her skill. Sorelli receives an alert at this and promptly contacts Kingston, but Garrett forces him to ignore the call by wordlessly threatening him with a knife. While Pavani is unable to unlock the K-9, Sorelli calls Kingston's residence causing Stephanie to excuse herself. Connor leaves with her under the pretext of visiting the washroom but ends up with Pavani in the garage. Left alone with Garrett, Kingston reveals that he is a telekinetic like him by aiming the knife at Garrett's face. However, since he has kept his powers hidden for quite a while as he rises up the ranks of the police department, he is no match for Garrett who easily keeps him at bay. Their standoff comes to an end when Stephanie comes back with a message for Kingston about his K-9. Garrett takes his leave then and Kingston heads to his garage only to find his K-9 missing. On the way to the towers, Pavani confirms that the K-9 has the footage of the fateful night that she lost to Rock. On their arrival at the towers, the cameras catch them even as Kingston gets on his way and instructs Sorelli to gather a unit of their trusted cops and non-lethal canines. Meanwhile, the group reaches Garrett's apartment, and Connor immediately realizes that he was never going to get his help. However, offering him a partnership, Garrett suggests that they use the footage on the K-9 to dominate Kingston instead of revealing his truth. Upon Connor's refusal, Garrett breaks the K-9 apart and hands its head over to one of his men. Meanwhile, Kingston arrives with his unit and reminds everyone to remain non-lethal to avoid making even more of a mess of an already messy situation. Garrett meets Kingston with what remains of his K-9 and proposes a new deal which effectively cuts his share down to half. Garrett adds that if he doesn't agree to the deal, he will have to face the consequences of his reality being out in public for everyone to see. In response, Kingston stabs Garrett and cuffs him before instructing his unit to tear through the place to look for the K-9's head. Seeing the cops head up, Connor and Pavani convince Garrett's team members to trust them and hand over the K-9 head to him. Once Kingston storms into the apartment with his unit, Connor engages a remote surge. However, with the unit's shield saving everyone, Connor and Pavani have no option but to retreat into an inner room leaving the others to deal with the police. Everyone's powers are tested as they tackle the cops while Connor and Pavani escape through a secret doorway to the apartment below. Meanwhile, Kingston is forced to use his own skills to avoid being hit before he shoots one of the powers. On the other hand, Connor and Pavani face a lone K-9 and attempt to get away while he shoots it with a surge. Urging Pavani to run, Connor uses the extent of his power to break down the K-9. However, after a momentary lapse, the K-9 returns to life and proceeds to administer Connor with a shot of psych. Fortunately, Pavani stops the K-9 in time by unleashing her full potential, thereby saving Connor's life. When Sorelli gets there with a K-9 of his own, Pavani's skills are proven when she takes control of the K-9 they were running from, and gets it to attack the cop's K-9 before taking down Sorelli as well. Having used most of her energy, Pavani collapses and urges Connor to keep going. Refusing to leave her behind, he heads outside with her. Noticing the media there, Connor asks for the camera even as a K-9 makes its way towards them. Garrett holds it back on his own and destroys it before Davis gets there and instructs everyone to stop attacking. The news reporter rushes over with the camera on which Connor places Pavani's hand before helping her transfer the data from Kingston's K-9. His truth is soon broadcasted everywhere, and Pavani is finally able to get justice for Turok. Unwilling to believe his fate, Kingston shoots at Connor and Pavani but Garrett's telekinesis attack manages to subdue him before Davis closes in to arrest Kingston. Three months later Connor is at the community center, this time having managed to get it running again to honor Mina. Seeing the progress he has made, Pavani is convinced that Mina would have appreciated his efforts in bringing the community together. Meanwhile, Kingston is arrested and an investigation is announced into the corruption prevailing in the police department. Additionally, due to various reports of the risks involved, Police robotics are banned, and while Garrett is in prison, Lincoln City is still seeing a rise in the supply of psych from an unknown source. Thanks for watching until the end. 
If you enjoyed this recap make sure to smash that subscribe button and as usual catch you on the next one.